sanitizing and disinfecting are two different things. They are two different things. Oh. Oh. Welcome to a podcast about nothing with V. AD. Hey, we, have, woo, we have some special guests today. We're excited. I know I am. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> well, let me tell you, Adrian lives to clean. Okay. I do. It's one of my favorite hobbies. I feel like it's, you know, it creates order. You keep your mind together, sane, cleaning and disinfecting. I'm learning are two different things. Might be a little dirty, but it's organized around here. Might be a little dirty. <laughs> but it's organized around here. We know that we have done nothing with our lives. And you will learn that also after talking to these two professionals that are going to teach us how to, the difference between cleaning and disinfecting. Welcome, yeah. Mark and Candace. Hey. <laughs> we got to get our sound effects together. We do. Um, we'll start. We'll start with you, uh, Candice. Tell us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, so I have been in the floor care um, industry for about probably fourteen years now. Um, I started doing um, floor care maintenance programs um, with a, a company. Um, got out of that, and then I started um, really selling and educating um, end users on how to maintain their properties and their carpeting and their floor care or their floor surfaces in house. Um, so that's really been my focus, which is helping um, hotels, school systems, um, all of that, how to have a safe and clean environment for these kids um, and for their workers. Nice. Then, then COVID came along and we got into a whole new world. <laughs> so. Yeah, pretty much. We all got into a whole new world. Yeah. Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I have been in the cleaning industry for 32 years. So that um, dates me just a little bit. I've been around the block a few times. Um, actually worked with Candace and her husband um, for all of the 14 years you've been in the business right yes. so um uh, my background is in, in cleaning and particularly uh most of those years have been in uh carpet maintenance so um but with in regards to uh you know cleaning in general um there's there's aspects of cleaning that are the same regardless of what you're actually cleaning Right. And so in the last seven years, I've been involved in Everest Microbial Defense, which is a company that specializes in protecting people from germs. So um, there's uh, what well, we'll talk about this today, I'm sure, is that, you know, there's a big difference between uh, there's a big difference between cleaning and a big difference between disinfecting and there's also a big difference in uh, ongoing protection and that is a possible scenario that most people don't even know exists so hopefully we get to talk about that amen well this is great one of my favorite things to do is clean one of my favorite topics i always try to preach the difference even though learning recently that i feel like i haven't really been up to par on the differences, but I do recognize there's a difference between cleaning and disinfecting. I like to read labels, so this is exciting. Let me tell you, she reads the label on everything. <laughs> if you go to the store with a <laughs> you will be there for a long time. I touch everything. I like to smell stuff, touch it, read the labels. Not that I know that everything's that, like, I know all the ingredients in things, but it's like, mm -mm. I'll look something up if it looks crazy. I feel like everybody should though. That's what cell phones are for. I don't have time. I got some kids <laughs> at home. Look, we need to get home and clean. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's start with the difference between uh, bacteria and a virus. Okay. That's a great question. There's some major differences between a bacteria and a virus. Um, you know, most people kind of categorize them all together as a germ, right? So in, they get thrown in the bucket as a germ. That's, that's fine, but 
understanding the difference really un helps you in understanding how best to clean, how best to disinfect, uh, to, to be able to be effective against both. Because mm -hmm. they are different. So the first glaring difference between a bacteria and a virus is a bacteria is a living organism and a virus technically is not living. Um, so it is, it requires a host mm -hmm. to be able to do what it does. So if, if you can imagine, um, like, oh, so bacteria, it's got a cell wall inside. It's got its, you know, uh, different parts, if you will, just to keep it simple. It's got its parts. It's contained in the cell wall. It does its thing. It divides. It grow. It multiplies. They, they're, bacteria are amazing, actually, and they're everywhere, <laughs> right? Viruses, since they're not really living, you can't really kill a virus. What you are hoping to do with a virus is inactivate it, make it so that it can't be active, okay? So even um, a virus does not have a cell wall, right? So it has a, a coating around it. It's a protein coating that's called a capsid coating. And, and you know, feel free to stop me if I get too technical. No, keep but going. It's, um, you have... You have that capsid coating, which provides some protection for the virus, but a virus actually needs a host. So it needs to get, find its way into your body. And then what it does is it basically hijacks a cell and changes the programming of that cell. So it is going to do what it wants it to do rather than what the cell is designed to do. Virus is the time what that is is that the virus just takes over and turns that cell into a virus factory. And so that's what happens is, a, you know, a virus gets in your body and it turns that cell into a virus factory and starts just pumping out new viruses that then go do the same thing in other cells. And mm. by the time your body figures out something's going on, there's already a whole army of viruses that are making you sick. And then our, our bodies are amazing things and the immune system kicks in and starts battling those viruses and uh, trying to beat it back so that it can take control of itself again. And so there's a difference between good bacteria and bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. And um, w w obviously you don't want to get rid of your good bacteria, but how do you ensure that with these cleaning products, such as, again, we use bleach for everything. Does mm -hmm. that kill all bacteria? Well, there is a... Th or hand sanitizer. Let's, that's, that's a better one. Hand sanitizer. Does that kill all bacteria? Or the 99.999 that they assure us in Pure L? It depends. Okay, so when you're talking about, let's talk about, I think this is where we have to start talking about uh, cleaning versus sanitizing versus disinfecting. Oh, yeah, let's get into Oh, you added another word in there. Sanitizing and disinfecting are two different things. They are two different things. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the difference. <laughs> So yeah, we're we're gonna learn a lot today. This is great. So this is great. Cleaning, I would define cleaning as the removal of dirt. Yeah. Right. So whether that's a carpet, whether that's your kitchen countertop or you know, your cell phone screen, right? You're gonna you clean it to remove the dirt. And that's where um, soap comes in, right? That's where you use your dawns and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So you know, you can use um, I mean, cleaning can be accomplished through uh, multiple, either a physical or a chemical means. So let's take like that countertop as an example. So you have a countertop, you, you know, you did some cooking, you got some, for lack of a better word, you got some schmutz on your, on your <laughs> countertop, right? And it needs to be clean. So you you grab a rag or you grab a sponge or you grab something, uh, a, a towel, 
and you wipe it clean. That's a physical action, a physical mm. um, method of removing soil. Dirt. Removing okay. dirt. Um, you can also aid that process by using some kind of a cleaning product. Now, a fantastic cleaning product that should never be overlooked is water. Water is a great cleaning product. Um, you know, so a little bit of water on that uh, cleaning tool, the, let's say it's a microfiber cloth, and you wet that microfiber cloth, and now you have a very effective way to clean. You're wiping away through a physical action and technically through a chemical action because water is a chemical and you're, and you're cleaning that countertop. Now you can also use, you know, a, a detergent, soap, or something like that that helps break down. That's the purpose of a cleaning chemical would be to break down the soils that are there to make them easier to remove. To remove, okay. Right? So that's cleaning. Sanitizing is when you are removing or cleaning some of the microbial activity that is on a surface. Okay. So that would be the, the definition that I would use. Uh, Candace, how, how would you describe sanitizing? Would it be different than that? No, I recognize that sanitizing is on the dishwasher. So does it have anything to do with like piping hot water? It's going to be your first line of getting rid of those, the bacteria that's left over from your cleaning. Okay. Right? Yeah. It, that's a good way to put it. it it's removing, it's removing some, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, but when you say sanitize, it means, I mean, quite literally, that's kind of what it means. You're removing some of the microbial activity that's on that surface. Mm -hmm. Sanitizing kind of comes into a better light when you talk about what is disinfecting. So disinfecting is actually removing at least 99.96% of the microbial critters, if you will, that are on that surface. So disinfecting is, is kind of sanitizing to a certain level. Okay. In what instances would you need to sanitize versus disinfect? It's a great question. I mean, in your normal everyday cleaning, most of the time you're cleaning and you're doing some sanitizing. So you're making that surface cleaner, both from a visible standpoint as well as a, uh, a germ standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Now, disinfecting is important when you want that surface or need that surface to be um, as safe as possible, right? Safe for interaction. So, you know, you could, you can clean, you know, I've seen this because we do, we do surface testing. And so you can go in and determine just how clean a surface is in terms of how much, how many microbes or germs are still left there. And I've gone in right after someone has cleaned their home and they knew I was coming. So they did an extra, you know, extra careful job, made sure. And they were, you know, standing there with a big smile on their face like, yeah, this is a clean kitchen. You're not going to find anything here. And then I do the testing and they just about fall over because it's, it looks clean. It smells clean, but it really isn't clean. I mean, there's a, still a lot of bacterial presence on a surface. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the problem with understanding this and learning all this is that once you know that it's there, it kind of freaks you out. Because honestly, I can say my mind has been on my dishes this whole time. Like, wait. <laughs> so I haven't been sanitizing or disinfecting. I've been cleaning with the same sponge, only using soap and Ew, water. Oh, you dirty. <laughs> like, I'm going crazy over here. But I hope <laughs> Well, and 
and um, Adrian, there's even when you look at some of your labels because you read your labels. Yes. There is two very distinct areas that say sanitize and disinfect. Mm -hmm. So sanitize, you don't have any of that dwell time. Okay, a lot of them will say to disinfect, you have to leave your surfaces saturated for this many minutes. With your sanitize, it's swipe over. So that's where, like Mark is saying, it's, it's eliminating some of that micro growth, but it's not, it's not getting rid of all of that that is actually sitting on top of our surfaces. Yeah, so that's the big difference. And, and you know, just, yeah, there you go. Just to jump in and say, you know, like on your dishwasher, you get the sanitize mode, which uses really hot steam and whatever. I think, I think in general, that's a good thing. I mean, it's heating it up. You know, most, most microbes can't survive that kind of heat. Okay. Okay. So I trust my dishwasher. I think you should trust yours. If it's functioning properly, I think you're good. Right. Okay. So that's, that's good. Um, when you're talking about a surface like your kitchen countertop or your sink or whatever, you, you don't have the ability to get it that hot, right? Yeah. And we can turn up the heat, heat in the house, but you're not going to get it that hot. So you, you need something else to be able to achieve that same result. I just, I'm looking around in the house like, <laughs> oh dang. dang. Well, and I will say, I don't wash a lot of my dishes. Most of my dishes do go into the dishwasher. Because mm -hmm. um, again, I can't, I can't get my water that hot to where I can actually feel comfortable that I've cleaned my dishes the way that they should be. Um, I do, um, Mark can talk about it later. There is, he does have a sponge um, that I am a huge fan of. I love it. So there is a good dishwashing sponge that we can talk about. Yeah. Oh, There's, right. It's, it's so that's another thing. Yeah, there was. Of course, I'm a little biased, but. <laughs> so when it comes to this COVID thing, as you guys know, we have been washing our hands for 20 seconds. Um, every couple of minutes, it feels like. My hands are dry. I have, there's not enough lotion. There's barely any soap, but you know. <laughs> not enough lotion to go around. So when it comes to this whole COVID thing and how we should be going about handling it, are the soaps that we're using on our hands effective? The hand sanitizers, what should we do with those? Should we be, because I know most things say keep them saturated, as you mentioned before, the preventative methods. What, could, what can we do to make sure we're not bringing these viruses, bacteria in the homes that we live in or something? I need help. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's a, a question that probably is on 99.9% .9 of all the people out there's minds, right? Yeah. Is um, what do I really need to worry about? What, what, what's the real story? You hear different, different accounts all the time. Every so I think understanding how do germs, how do germs transfer is the first step there, right? And so you have, you have, um, you really have three primary modes of transmission. Well, whenever you whether you're talking about bacteria or viruses, you have the air, right? So they can be airborne, right? Um, that's the one that we have the least control over right so they can be out in the air and you can breathe them in mm -hmm. um but then you have uh direct physical contact so you know i reach out and i shake your hand right direct direct contact and then you have touch surfaces so perfect example of a touch surface is a doorknob all right i touch touch that doorknob, whatever was on my hand, some of it gets left behind. There's just no two ways around that. That's always gonna happen, right? But when I touch that doorknob, I also pick up some of what was already on that doorknob, right? So it kind of changes the way you think as you, especially when you're in a public place oh, and you okay. see people, you know, so you don't, 
you don't know where they were, what they've done, you know, when was the last time they washed their hands, you know, all of that is a, is a big unknown. But when I touch that doorknob, I'm leaving some behind and I'm picking up some of what was there. And then you come and touch that door, doorknob and you're doing the same thing. And so you multiply that by a hundred people and you, you kind of have a bacterial soup that's going on. Mm. And that's how wow. you, <laughs> you transfer. So, so touch surfaces is a huge deal. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that is a, is a primary focus of our company, Everest Microbial Defense, because we actually have a, um, an antimicrobial surface protector that can go on that doorknob or that kitchen counter or that toilets or really any surface and provide long-term protection against those microbes because the other thing that people really need to understand is that bacteria and viruses can remain on a surface and remain viable so in the you know remain active in case of a of a virus or alive in the case of a bacteria for anywhere from a couple of minutes to weeks, it really just depends mm. on <laughs> on what? the bacteria. Now, they say with the COVID that you know it's it doesn't do well outside of a host, so it doesn't last really very long um, on surfaces, et cetera. But it still could be there for a matter of hours, right? Yeah. So. When you look at that doorknob and you're reaching for the doorknob, you know, anyone that touched that doorknob within the last couple of hours is a potential th threat, if you will, you know, as to what they've left behind. Um, unless, unless that surface is protected. Mm. So one of, the, one of the big things is, is when you look at, let's go back to that kitchen countertop and you clean it. So now it's no visible soil on there. And then you do a proper disinfection. So you take your disinfectant, you follow the directions on the label. It says, you know, spray apply it to the surface, allow the surface to stay wet for 10 minutes. That's the dwell time Candace alluded to. That dwell time's really important because that disinfectant needs time to start working. kill all those germs. So the 99.9% .9 claim is based upon following that direction exactly, 10 minutes. If you wait five minutes and wipe it down, you didn't kill 99.9% .9 of the germs. 10 minutes, yes. And those, you know, the testing that all those products have to go through is very extensive and all that. But dwell time is absolutely necessary to be able to, to kill that. But even if you did, even if you got 100%, so you blew right past that 99.99%. You got all the way to 100. So there wasn't a single living germ on that surface. And you, you did a perfect job. How, how long does that surface stay germ-free? I was just about to ask you. I was gonna say, probably less than a couple of minutes. Because <laughs> exactly. there's probably everything in the air. It makes sense. Only like there's stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I usually tell people that a surface will stay disinfected only until the next person touches it. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's the truth, is the next person that touches it. Because those disinfectants, they're, they, they're designed to evaporate and go away. They're not intended for, for people, right? They're intended for the germs. So you put it on that surface. And when it's done doing its thing, you wipe it away and it evaporates very quickly. And that's by design so that you're not then absorbing that into your skin. You're not, it's not hanging around and getting on your sandwich later on today. Um, it's going away. And so once it goes away, there is no future protection. So once you use hand sanitizer and your hands are dry, you're not being protected anymore. Nope. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, like a, an alcohol based hand sanitizer is going to provide you. Um, does it, does it, does the alcohol, is the alcohol effective? Yes, as a sanitizer. Remember, there's a difference between sanitizing and disinfecting. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you kept your hands wet with the stuff for 10 minutes, you could achieve a disinfection level. But they don't even stay wet uh, for 10 minutes. But, ha you know, who does that? Yeah, are you going to keep it wet for 10 minutes, right? So you've sanitized, but once that alcohol evaporates, the next thing you touch, now your hands are contaminated again, or potentially contaminated. Oh my gosh. I would say that we're just better off washing our hands. And you know, if you look, you know, everybody says, I hear this all the time, probably 10, 15 times a day at least. I thought the CDC said, you know, use 60% alcohol and that's what you gotta do. You gotta do, you gotta do. But if you go to the CDC site, they're all about hand washing. Yes. Hand, wash your hands with soap and water. Wash your hands with soap and water every chance you get, right? If you don't have access to soap and water, then, then use something that has, you know, some sanitizing ability is basically what they're saying. And that's the way you should look at, at hand sanitizer. So does it have to be antibacterial soap? Oh, that's a great question. That's a really good question, B. Do you want an answer? No, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's not ready. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so actually, my answer to that is no. And in fact, don't waste your money on, on that antibacterial hand soaps. Yeah. The studies that I've seen show that there's no difference between how many germs you remove from your hand with regular soap and water as opposed to a antibacterial soap and water. Mm -hmm. So why spend the extra money on something that doesn't provide an added benefit? Candace, do you agree with that? I do. I'm, I do not have antibacterial hand soap. I am a soap and water basic soap and water person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, um, years ago when my daughter was a toddler, um, her doctor told us don't use rubbing alcohol to clean cuts and stuff. Don't use peroxide because what happens is that uh, alcohol peroxide, it kills the skin, basically. She said soap and water. She said regular bar soap. You know, it, it just soap and water to clean it out is the best thing you can do. So mm -hmm. I guess that still holds true today. Dang. I think about that. So is there anything in particular we should be looking for in cleaning products once we purchase? Like, you know, there's hand soap. There's all these different brands that are vegan and this free and that free and gluten and all kind of stuff. I'm not sure what's that gluten. <laughs> <laughs> like all kind of stuff that's happening in the world versus the one dollar hand soap from the dollar store. Is there a difference in product? Or is there something that we should be looking for in particular when it comes to that? I'd like to know more. My personal preference. Um, I tend, to, I still do buy the um, eco all natural products. Okay. Now I don't buy them because I think that they're better products. I, I think that they're better for the environment. Yes. Do I think it cleans better? No. Okay. Um, typically, and my cleaning routine has switched due to all of this. Um, my cleaning routine has become more of, I disinfect on a regular basis. I go back and I treat with my smell pretty like the way it smells cleaning products. Oh, that's how I do it with all the lemon flavored cedar wood stuff. Yes, I love those. Um, <laughs> so to me, I, I'm now more, I more have always purchased cleaning products because I like the way they smell. Um, 
and other things that doesn't mean I think that they clean better. Because I'm one of those people who would go to Ulta or Bath and Body Works and buy the hand soaps because of how they smell, but I don't want to be counteractive in how I'm trying to clean my hands. Because I am one of those people who believe dial works better than other things because it is antibacterial. So mm. I know somebody else out there thinks like me. We're just trying to clear up. <laughs> <laughs> don't waste all your money. Well, yeah. And so, and if we go back to um, basic hand, hand soap works best with water when I want to clean my hands. Well, of course, I'm going to find one that I think is better for me, better for the environment, because at the end of the day, if I'm spending 20 seconds scrubbing my hands, we've all seen how we need to clean. <laughs> if I'm doing that for 20 seconds, yeah, I'm going to have one that I like, and I like the way it smells. Do I think one's better than the other? No. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things, and um, Candace and I have had this discussion numerous times about cleaning is many, many people, most people, they clean and assume that if it looks clean and it smells clean, that it is clean. And I am just here to say that is not true. Okay. Now, I'm not opposed to it looking clean. It should look clean after you clean it, right? I'm not opposed to it smelling clean. It should smell clean. But those two things do not equate to clean. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have something that smells fine and it can be just loaded with bacteria. Um, you know, many of the many of the cleaning products use scents to mask the problem. Okay. So um, most of your odors, like if you think about, uh, like take that kitchen sponge as an example. You know, kitchen sponges, they can get pretty nasty and smell pretty terrible. They make your hands smell and all that. Well, what's causing that? The answer is bacteria. Okay. So the bacteria is growing in the sponge. And oftentimes a byproduct of bacterial growth is odor, okay? And so when you're smelling that, I mean, your bacteria, your sponge is full of bacteria. It's, it's bad. Pretty, pretty disgusting, right? So um, you, could, you could take a scented soap and put it on that sponge and work it into the sponge and now the sponge smells better. But did you get rid of it, the problem? No, you didn't really get rid of the problem. So like if I walk into a bathroom in a public setting and the, 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 uh, you know, the, the smell is very chemically, you know, chemical, maybe, it, maybe it's a fresh spring like smell or it's, it smells like strawberries or you know whatever it could be um my immediate thought is what are they covering up <laughs> i mean i'm the i'm in the business right so i know all right if you're using that much good smell it's because you're trying to cover up something right i'd much rather walk into a bathroom that looks clean doesn't have an artificial smell at all but it also doesn't smell bad in any way because I know it's probably a lot cleaner. Yeah. So don't, don't equate appearance and smell with clean. This may be an off the wall question when it comes to the dish thing. Um, I put two and two together. I use a makeup sponge when I'm applying my makeup, right? But I usually wash it. Me and V just had this conversation yesterday. I wash I'm it. I'm my business. <laughs> like I wash. I wash the makeup sponge every day, but you don't think to do it with your dishes. You know, is there a way to wash it? This may be nasty because I think it's nasty, but I've done it a couple of times, putting my sponge in the microwave for 30 seconds and trying to extract, I guess, and then like soaking in and stuff like that. I believe in throwing those away. Sponges are cheap, they're less than a dollar, guys. But does that work? <laughs> um, the, the studies show that putting in the microwave will kill some of the bacteria that's in there. So it'll improve it, but it doesn't kill at all. 
okay. right? Just it just doesn't. So um, I don't know. I mean, can we? Can I actually talk about our sponge on this? Yes, program? of course. Tell okay. us all about it. All right. So Everest Microbial Defense is my company, right? And we have a we have a a line of products that we call our no stench products. So we have a no stench kitchen sponge, a no stench microfiber cloth, no stench floor mops, um, those kinds of things. And then the sponge, um, I wish I had one here, I could just show it to you, but it is treated with our nanotechnology that basically prevents any bacteria from growing in the materials of the sponge. So it is, it's a permanent part of the sponge. So we actually guarantee our sponges for 90 days that they won't smell. Ooh. And I mean, money back guarantee. If it, if it smells in 90 days, we'll, we'll pay you your money back. Um, and I mean, truth be told, I've used sponges in my own home a lot longer than 90 days. I mean, it, as long as the sponge is still physically there, <laughs> it's not going to allow any bacteria to grow in there. So you don't have that smell. And, you're, and then you're also not transferring that bacteria from the sink to the countertop to the dishes or whatever you're using it for. Um, so it's a much better alternative. And Candice, you use, you use the, those sponges, the no-stem sponges. And... Yeah, I mean, mine definitely lasted longer than 90 days. Um, and I am a big uh, proponent of the microfiber um, cloths. Um, that to me, and I mean, my biggest complaint about using microfiber, because I use microfiber in water, is I don't have a smell. So, you know, we talked about how things smell after we clean them. If I have no smell, I, I know I, I'm still clean. <laughs> I know my surfaces are still clean because I've, I've, done, I've done my mechanical clean with my microfiber and I've used my chemical, which is my water. So my, again, I, I disinfect, then I do my microfiber and sometimes a retreat of the spray with a paper towel just so I get my smells, but yeah. Microfiber and then his sponges. So let's talk about microfiber for a moment because microfiber is an excellent cleaning tool. Fantastic cleaning tool. And the reason for that is that if you, if you take like a regular cotton towel and compare it to a microfiber cloth, the uh, a single wipe of the cotton towel across a countertop is, um, well, a single wipe of the microfiber, this is a better way to put it, a single wipe of the microfiber is like, you know, 40 wipes of a cotton cloth across that. It's just so much more efficient. And it's because microfiber is, um, Basically, where they they take the they take the fiber and they um, it's split at the factory, and so split into just millions of little fingers of fibers. And so as you so it increases the surface area of that exponentially, but all those little fingers just love to grab onto any dust or dirt or grime that's on that surface. So every wipe is just so much more efficient and it actually removes things rather than just moving them around. Mm. So when you have, you have that microfiber cloth, you can clean with just water, just damp, dampen it and you can clean very effectively in most cases without needing to go to the closet to get the detergents and the, the chemicals and and all of that and if you've used our other our other product the the antimicrobial surface protector um, which is called bioprotect so it's bioprotect rtu which just stands for ready to use so it's ready to use but bioprotect 
goes on a surface and it protects that surface. You want to put it on a clean. You've already cleaned and disinfected and then you protect. So we talk mm -hmm. about that. We clean, disinfect, and protect. And so it's a long-term protection that goes on. It binds to that surface. It doesn't come off the surface. Um, it's invisible. You can't feel it. You can't see it. It doesn't change the way that surface feels in any way, shape, or form. But it keeps that surface 99.96%, which is, again, disinfection level, uh, for 90 days, up to 90 days. Okay, so you clean it, uh -huh. you disinfect, and mm -hmm. do you guys have a product for disinfecting? And so I know you disinfect and then you protect, or do you disinfect with your, you know, the Lysol, the bleach, and then you put the protectant on it to keep that? That, that is true. We do have a product that we recommend as, our, as the preferred disinfectant. And Candace, why don't you talk about that one? Yeah, so um, the product that I, I, I recommend is a product called Vital Oxide. Um, it's a great um, disinfectant. So that's actually what we're using here at, my home, at our home. Um, there's a large school system within Georgia. That's the only thing that they use. Um, it's, it's a fantastic disinfectant. So I believe that dwell time is what, four minutes? For yeah. vital oxide, yeah, it's a much shorter dwell time. It is, um, and again, that's ready to use too. So basically, what you would do is you would go through, you would clean, you would remove your dirt, your debris, which is going to get your first layer of um, bacteria, because bacteria does live in your dirt and debris. Clean that, get rid of all of that. Go through, disinfect. Once your surface is completely cleaned and disinfected then you go through and you add on that protectant. Mm. Okay. And, and for children, so children, toys, you said that the school system uses it. Can you do the same thing? Because I am famous for throwing all the toys in the bathtub, spraying them down with bleach, letting them sit there, <laughs> rinsing them off, going like this, and then putting them back in the toy box. And I do that once or twice a month. Um, especially and sometimes more when they're in school. Um, is that right or wrong? And what am I doing to my kids? <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> yeah, teach me, please. <laughs> you know, that that is, I mean, that's not a, not a bad practice to do, to, to clean and disinfect those toys like that. It comes back to, so you've cleaned them, you've disinfected them, but you've done nothing to protect them, right? So they go back in the toy box, and how long do they stay clean and disinfected? Until one of them dirty kids comes and touches yeah, them. One of those dirty kids <laughs> picks it up and you're back to square one, right? So um, that's, the, that's the missing link that most people don't understand that there is available a way to protect surfaces from future contamination. So that's, I mean, that's huge, right? Is that, that toy, that doorknob, that countertop can, can be protected in the time between cleanings. So we don't, we're not saying put on the, put on BioProtect and never clean again. That's not the message, right? You right. still need to clean. You're still going to get that schmutz on the countertop that needs to be wiped off, right? But when you wipe that away, under underneath, you've got this always there protection. Just about to ask that. It's always there. And so you, and because of this technology, I mean, we can get into the, the mechanics of it, but it, it doesn't kill using poisons. So your bleaches, your disinfectants, all those things, they, they in essence rely on poisoning the microbe to That's get rid of it. 
open so many windows and we use bleach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, bleach, it poisons it, right? So is it effective? Yes, it's very effective, um, but it poisons it. So, you know, you, you don't want your kids playing with the bleach bottle, right? Because it's a dangerous product. I mean, used properly, it's very effective and, you know, it's relatively safe and all that, but it still accomplishes its, it does its job by poisoning the microbe. Mm. Our protectant has no poisons or, or anything like that. It does it from a, in a physical kill rather than a chemical kill. So when you put this protectant on, I'll describe to you what it is. So it's like putting, putting on an invisible blanket of molecular spikes. And those molecular spikes, if you think of uh, like a forest of little swords or the forest of little spikes that are covering that doorknob. They're at the molecular level, so you can't see them, you can't feel them. They're, they're way too small to do anything to a human, but they're like the worst nightmare for bacteria and viruses. And, and the reason is that that little spike, it's made up of carbon atoms, a nitrogen molecule and the bonding mechanism that bonds it to the doorknob or the countertop or the toy or whatever you put it on is an, an organosilane molecule. So that's a basically kind of a derivative of sand, right? So you basically have wood, air, and sand in a very unique mo molecular structure that enables it to protect that surface. And the way it protects is, is that a nitrogen molecule carries a very strong positive charge, okay? And all bacteria, all viruses, all mold spores, mildew, and fungi all carry a negative charge. So when you were a kid, you played with magnets, right? And opposites attract, right? So negative is drawn to the positive and there's nothing that little germ can do about resisting that pull, right? It's, it gets close enough, it's gonna go to it. Well, when it does, in a bac from a bacterial standpoint, that bacteria is, if this, if this pen is the, is the spike, the bacteria is drawn to the spike and it literally, it's mm -hmm. impaled on that spike as it's drawn down onto that spike. It's physically ruptured. The cell wall's ruptured. Once the cell wall's ruptured, it's done. It can't survive that. And it can't adapt to that either. So um, if you've, you've probably heard the, the statement, I've, it's been around a long, long time, but what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Mm -hmm. Well, in the germ world, that's very, very true. What doesn't kill them makes them stronger. Mm. And so if you use a little bit of poison and kill off some of them, what ends up happening is they start to become resistant mm. because they, you just made them mad, right? Mm. You didn't get rid of them, you made them mad, and now they're gonna adapt to the next time you come with that bleach or you come with whatever. and one of the reasons we have superbugs in this world is that we don't always kill them all. Mm -hmm. And they start to adapt and they become resistant to, to our efforts. But when you talk about a physical kill, they can't adapt to that, right? How do they adapt to getting stabbed? It doesn't work. Now, so there's another element. It's kind of a double whammy of of a physical killing property is you when you get all those spikes together i have to use pens because right get all those spikes that are all lined up together on that surface all of those positive charged nit nitrogen molecules create in essence a cationic field and what that means is basically it's a it's it's 
it's like a death field for the microbes as they come in contact it's like they get electrocuted by that it's oh. the opposite charge is strong enough that it totally disrupts them and they literally pretty much are blown apart by that field of molecular spikes and that's how viruses are killed by this product so viruses are too small remember viruses don't have a cell wall so you can't puncture them and viruses really aren't alive so you can't kill them but they're inactivated when they come in contact with that cationic field they just literally disintegrate so it's very effective against both bacteria and viruses but that's how it does it, it does it in a physical way not a chemical way so now if you think about that child's toy it's on there it's bound there it's a bound technology it doesn't leach off it doesn't leave the surface of the toy so where do, for small kids where do toys go right in their mouth right yeah. so um it's not an issue because it's a bound technology it stays there they put it in and out of their mouth all day long none of the none of those spikes are coming off in their mouth they're remaining on the toy you know there it's it's doing its job protecting that toy um when you use chemicals you know traditional chemicals on those toys there's always the risk that there's some residue that's that does come off of those toys right so they put it in their mouth and you're always thinking mm, did i really get that clean enough oh, so anyway yeah. that's that's how it works it's incredibly effective for a long period of time and so it kind of changes the game if you think about it right cleaning and disinfecting and oh no someone touched that i got to clean and disinfect oh i got to clean disinfect oh i got you'd be doing that all day long if you want to maintain a disinfected surface let me add clean, disinfect it and protect it is this something that can be used on all surfaces? Because I know on for certain things, I like to clean a certain way. So something that can be used, like you said, is safe enough for the children's toys. But I, I don't know. I can't think of a surface right now. Like, like any, your sofa. I'm sorry? Like your sofa. Yeah. Like, can it be used on anything? High touch anywhere anybody's going to be? You know, I want to protect everything. People yeah. Are it can and that's one of the amazing things like it's in the sponge right that's the the technology that's keeping that sponge from smelling so it works in soft surfaces and hard surfaces cool so it's yeah it's pretty incredible that's that's why i'm i i'm doing what i'm doing because it's it's a fantastic product and we want people to use it. We want people to know about it because it really can change the way your family interacts with the world. You know, and we've, we've talked about this too. It's COVID-19 is not going away. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to figure out how to, how to be with it, um, figure out how to adjust to a life with this. So again, we can keep cleaning and we can keep disinfecting. Like Mark said, we're going to be doing that all day every day it's going to be exhausting but if we can protect ourselves you know protect my surfaces protect me my hand the hand purifier um that um we have as well it's the same technology so i immediately then i'm not as scared to go out into the world i'm not as scared to touch another surface because i know that i have this protectant on my hand that is mechanically killing anything that I touch. Now, granted, I'm still going to go through and, and do my hand hygiene, but I become less scared and know that I'm more protected against what now seems to be a new normal or a very unknown situation. Mm -hmm. So wait, so the hand sanitizer that you guys have, you mm -hmm. put it on and how long does it last? How long can I wash my hands, you know, throughout the day and it's still there protecting? Um, oh, the people want to know. Tell us. Okay. So when you talk about the, the hand sanitizer, it is, again, it's still considered a sanitizer, right? 
So not a not a disinfector, right? But you put it on and you get the, an instant sanitizing effect, right? Um, but it also has the protectant, so the protective sp spikes that now bond to your hand and remain there, right? So now you have ongoing protection that helps manage the risk. It's nothing, you, just, you never should think about anything that we've talked about or anything that you can buy off of a shelf anywhere that completely eliminates risk, right? But the, the name of the game is how do you effectively manage risk? How do you reduce your risk so that when you interact with the world, you, you know, you're, you're safer, you're, you're reducing the risk of picking up something. And so you, you may use the surface protectant at your house, but you know, did the, are they using it at the mall? I don't know. So you go to the mall, if you, you put on the, the hand sanitizer before you go, now you're at least reducing the risk of picking something up. Now you still should wash your hands every, every ch chance you get. It's the best thing you can do. But in between hand washings, you, you know you at least have some level of protection that you're, you're not picking up as much as you would without it. And it stays all day? You put it on once and it's, it's there or do you have to reapply? It's uh, officially rated for six hours. Mm. Sit, wait, sit, hold on. <laughs> oh, like six hours. So you put you put it on, and it will provide lasting protection up to six hours. I have officially reduced my risk of cross contamination until ten o'clock tonight. Even if I wash my hands. Yes. Yeah. Even if you wash your hands. Oh, snap. So you should wash your hands, right? We're we're suggesting you wash your hands when you get a chance because that's still your best line of defense. Mm -hmm. But in between hand washings, now you have some protection on your hands. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's a game changer there too, right? That was the whole point of us washing our hands. So we need this. Yeah. So how do your hands usually feel after you use your alcohol-based hand sanitizer? Dry. My hands feel so lovely. I wish you could touch them. <laughs> yeah, dry. Like my skin was peeling. I had to scale back and buy different soap. You have to get the one with the moisturizer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the moisturizers are built right in. Yeah. This product, so it's a, it's a hydrating hand sanitizer, which sounds like an impossibility, but it's true. It, it so we don't use alcohol in it, um, and then there's um, skin conditioners and aloe vera is in there, so it makes your hands really nice and soft, well moisturized. Um, we have. A lot of our customers say that you know they used to use lotion all the time and now they don't even use lotion because their hands just stay nice and nice and moisturized. Wow. Because a lot of years ago I had to purchase a new hand lotion. Yeah. So that that's amazing. I'm My hands are dry, dry. It's <laughs> <laughs> a mess. Wow. Okay. This is this is a lot of great information. I'm gonna write McDonald's and recommend that you guys are in every McDonald's. <laughs> I am. Because think about okay. I mean, I like McDonald's food. I like their nuggets. I'm the fan. Go ahead, B. This because it is. It's so nasty. Think about it. All right, you go to McDonald's, and the next time you go in a McDonald's, whenever that will be, if you go into the bathroom. They don't have, when you're exiting, they don't have push doors and they don't have paper towels in their bathroom. I think that is the most disgusting thing ever. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, you can't grab, you can't grab with anything. Everybody's not going to do this. And I don't know where your sleeve's been. Yeah. And I think we're realizing that um, people have a very different opinion of what's clean. Right. Why are we just now learning how that we should properly wash our hands? 
Yeah. I've definitely been in bathrooms where I've watched women come out of the stall and go straight for the door. And I'm like, you guys have it way better than the guy's side. I'll tell you that. <laughs> the stress. The stress. It's, it's, it's one of my, it's one of my things that just gets me riled. Every time I go into a public restroom, why do I have to pull the door open exactly. See, after not, I use the restroom? I'm not crazy. Yeah. And you don't have paper towels. I think that's, that is insane. So it doesn't matter if your employees right. wash their hands, if they touch that doorknob, which I think all doorknobs are disgusting. Mm -hmm. Touch that doorknob, but especially McDonald's because you don't have push doors to leave your bathroom. Yeah. I've been saying this since episode one. Look, I'm <laughs> one with you. I'm about to go to, to every McDonald's and, and spray some. What is it? I'm about to spray some protectant. <laughs> okay. I open <laughs> I'm gonna write Warren Buffett. Doesn't he own McDonald's? He owns a lot of things. I don't know if he owns McDonald's or not. I think he, I think he owns like the most shares in McDonald's. I'm gonna I'm gonna write him. Watch. Okay. I bet you he'll respond. <laughs> Look, Warren, this is for you. I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> this has been amazing. This was amazing. This was absolutely amazing. Now I know you guys wanted to talk about carpet cleaning as well. I think that's a part two. Um, that's, we can definitely do a part two we can do it now if you want to because we have a lot of people in our house and we have carpet because of kids this you know what let's do a part two because i think a lot of moms would really benefit carpet from is its own is its own period but i yeah. think yeah no carpet for sure is its own animal um huh. yeah yeah Although I'm, a, I love carpet. So I, I'm, I'm a it is carpet fan, big time. My, my wife pressed for hardwood floors for 20 years in our house, right? And she finally won. Hey. And I kept telling, I kept telling her, you realize that hardwood floors is going to be more time cleaning. You're going to spend a lot more time cleaning. And she's like, no, I mean, I vacuum all the time, and it's, and. After we'd had them for about six months, she goes, you were right. It's a lot more cleaning. Mm -hmm. You know, it just is. I love carpet too. Yep. And what people, this is the, uh, a teaser for the carpet segment, okay? So carpet is the largest air filter in your home. What? Yep. Air? It's the largest air filter in any building where carpet is. It's mm -hmm. the largest air filter. It's... The air air's flowing around and it filters out an unbelievable amount of stuff. And you figure, we know that we shed as people. Our skin is always shedding. There's mites. I mean, dust mites. I, it's true. It's true. But you have dust mites. You have, um, you know, pet dander, all of that kind of stuff. If you did not have carpet, where is that stuff going? Sure. It is sitting on your hard surface. Until and someone walks by. Until someone, and then we start thinking about going back up in the air. Brown, all of the dust that's flowing behind them as they're walking. No, carpet every day, all day. Carpet does a great job of capturing and holding dirt. It, mm -hmm. That's what it really, you should think about. That's its job. So yep. then you got to clean that filter on a regular basis so it doesn't fill up. Yep. Oh my gosh. That, oh, okay. This so, is great. We can do a whole segment on carpet. <laughs> this threw my mind for a loop as I'm sitting right next to my air filter. <laughs> Looking at it like this is useless thing. <laughs> carpet is amazing. And I think carpet gets such a bad rap these days because we don't yep. know how to properly clean it. So, when they don't know how to properly clean something, they say, this is useless, this doesn't work, this is terrible, get rid of it. And then there's studies that show that schools that are now switching over to hard surfaces, they have more issues with sickness, they have more issues with allergies, um, because now you have removed that filter that is trapping all of that 
stuff that's in the air that that we bring in that we produce that now is in the air and people are having a hard time with it wow and i have really bad allergies i itch all day really yeah so allergies are no fun yeah um, at all wow this was amazing guys i'm gonna hold you to it at like soon i'm about to send an email and say okay let's schedule this uh, call yeah because i'm i'm ready for it i know ad is look at her I, because i have questions <laughs> like, <laughs> I have questions it is crazy and mm -hmm. i just thought i was just doing a great old job over here maintaining and cleaning up got your little air filter that's why i'm excited because i know we'll receive questions from this i know it I know we receive questions that people want to know more, want to know what to do and how to go about it. So, yeah. yeah so, so what we want to do for, for you guys and for your listeners, um, we talked about some really cool stuff. Um, obviously, it, it kind of changes our way we have to think about things. But we wanted to give you guys and your listeners a 10% discount if they want to try any of the products. Hey. Hey, yeah. guys. Protect yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're dirty. Now everybody knows that they're dirty. They're not disinfecting. All they're doing is putting smell goods on stuff. That's right. That so. Is great. So we'll get that information for you guys, and I'm sure guys will have this in the post once this uh, episode is available. Yep. What what we'll do too is we'll send you guys stuff for you to try, mm -hmm. so you can you can then. Uh, you know, tell people how great it is, or if you don't like it, let me know, please. But I think, you know, everyone loves, loves this stuff. So I think you'll like it. We promise. The, the kitchen sponge. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> She's trying to clean her dishes. She's sitting there now thinking about like, dang, I got to get rid of this sponge. <laughs> All right. <laughs> in a time in my dishes, I'm about to eat with a dirty fork. Like, look, mine is racing. Yeah. Oh, man thank you guys so so much um to all of our listeners make sure you subscribe to the youtube page because part two is coming um and you want to know when it comes so make sure you subscribe so you can get that little notification that says hey you need to clean your carpet too <laughs> because you want clean air you know so wow. yeah this was this was really really dope thank you mark thank you so much candace yes thank you. Yeah, you got a lot of work doing. to do. You changed lives today, at least mine. Okay. <laughs> you know, we're all here to help. So if you have questions, let us know. If you guys get a bunch of questions, just we'll answer them the best that we can. Amen. And before we go, you guys can go ahead and plug your website, um, anywhere we can find you all as well. We'll, of course, link the links below for you all, but people want to know who they're coming to find. Yeah, so I'm Candice. Um, I own Grava. Uh, it's G-R-A-V-A. -A. Um, my website is grava.co. So no M, just C-O. Um, you can go there. You can get your products from there. Mark Whaley here with Everest Microbial Defense, and uh, our website is everestdefense.com. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, we'll definitely hit you guys to do that carpet one because we need to all breathe better. Um, yeah, thank you. Any last words, anything else you guys want to say in with? We covered so much today. We covered a lot. Yeah, just be healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Wash your hands and be healthy. <laughs> Let's protect ourselves. Much. Guys. Well, you guys have a great weekend. You too. You too. Both Love. of you. Thank yeah. you guys. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.